Okay, Tammy. I'll show you. Okay, everybody. Again, hi, and thanks so much for joining us today. It's so good to see our para friends faces here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, so we can see the presentation for today. And Tammy, if you can help me monitor the chat a little bit since I'm sharing my screen, that would be awesome. I, I will do that. Great. Okay, so um, again, uh, we're here for Understanding Autism today with the fabulous superhero, Paris of ESU8. Um, we're so glad you could join us. I know it's hard to find time in our busy schedules, especially on this crazy year, but we're glad that you were able to hop over and see us today. Um, I'll have the other ladies introduce themselves and I'll follow. I'm Tammy Cheatham and I work uh, here at ESU with uh, professional development and I have the privilege of working with Steph with Paris. So I've enjoyed that. This is my second year. So I really enjoy um, making those connections with you and establishing relationships. That's right there. And then the other one pops up. Here. I'm Kathy Fiel, and I'm one of the school psychologists here at ESU 8, and I work on the East End. Oh, no, um, no, no, I no, serve no, Stanton no. and Madison schools, and um, I'm kind of a guest speaker right. today, I guess, dropping in on you guys. <laughs> we're, we're so happy to have you, Kathy. Thank you for always being willing to help us out. And we actually had this segment scheduled for last April, but of course, um, we had to have some um, scheduling changes there. So um, uh, we're glad that you could join us today for that. And um, I am Steph Lundgren. Um, I've been working with you, Paris, for, I don't know, five years or so. We've been doing para trainings. Um, and um, I have to say, they're some of my most rewarding days. So I'm so glad to see you all. Um, and here we go. So today, first of all, we want to just ask you how you're feeling. Um, we've talked a lot about self self care through our para trainings, and you know it's a good way to just kind of assess yourself each day and think about you know where you would fall on a chart, and um, maybe think about how you could move up the chart a little bit. So um, take a look. We found a superhero chart, so it was just perfect to use with our superhero paras this year. So um, five, if you're feeling a five, you're kind of out of control, you're the Hulk. You feel like you're about to explode. You feel completely overwhelmed and um, may become unsafe. If you're feeling like a four, um, you're starting to lose it. You're the Black Panther. You're getting uh, very angry and I might start to say things I don't mean. Three would be anxious, worried, excited. You're the Flash. Uh, you feel like you um, need to run away as fast as you possibly can. A number two, um, you're Catwoman. You think you can handle it. Um, you're going to push yourself to try and make um, your very best, even if, if it's hard. And you'll feel proud when you get through it. And if you're a one, you're just right. You're Superman. Uh, nothing can bring you down. I'm a man of steel and you feel on top of the world. So kind of just take a second to think about that. And if you're in the room with someone, um, kind of talk about it for a second. Where do you fall on this chart? And if you feel like it, you could add into the chat on how you're feeling today. But we might ask for a couple volunteers too. Hey, Kathy, how are you feeling today? Oh, I was just going to type in the, in, in the chat box. Um, I feel like I am a two. Um, you know, anytime when I'm presenting information, um, I always feel just a little bit like, oh, I hope I'm going to do okay. Um, so I think I can handle it. I'm feeling like Catwoman. I'm going to channel my inner Catwoman today. Awesome. Tammy, how are you feeling today? Oh, I was um, just today. I mean, normally I'm pretty much number two, but today I was just a little anxious, worried. There's lots of things going on. I'm planning for a lot of um, sessions that I'm leading. And so I just have to prioritize what I'm doing today. So <laughs> great. Well, not, not great that you're more worried. I don't mean that. 
I got to say, I'm feeling pretty Superman like today. Things are getting done. It's kind of one of those taskmaster days where I'm able to check a lot of things off and I'm just getting stuff done. So that feels really good. Um, yeah. So how about out in schools, Paris, how are you guys feeling today? Anybody willing to share out? Anything in on the chat? I feel like I'm probably a two today. Okay. There have been other days that I'll admit is probably maybe a four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> today it's a pretty good day. Do you feel like this year there are more fours than in previous years, Sherry? Yes, I do. Yes. Educators I don't know have a lot on their plates this year. What's that? Educators have a lot on their plates this year, a lot of worries. Yes. yes. Anyone else? Okay, well, just remember that looking at a chart like this and trying to um, identify, you know, where you're falling um, might help you then be able to use some strategies to, you know, um, you know, lower your number and to feel a little bit better throughout the day. So uh, we'll talk about some self-care tips later, um, but we, acknowledge that this year's a little tougher than um, some of our other years and um, we hope that you're doing well and hope that you can keep maintain a low number. Okay, so Kathy will take away. Kathy, just let me know when you want to advance the screen. Okay, sounds good. So um, a lot of a lot of this afternoon's time is going to be spent exploring a little bit of information about autism spectrum disorder. Um, and I'm sure that many of you in your schools have experience or have had experience over the years. And so we're just going to give some basic information um, and we have a video that we're gonna watch today. So you can go ahead and change the slide stuff. So these are just a few facts. Um, autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects how kids process certain types of information. Autism is lifelong and you don't grow out of it. So some, some other facts about autism that people with autism struggle with social interaction, sensory processing, and communication. Those are the three kind of major common areas um, <clears throat> that individuals with autism will have difficulties in those areas. Autism really does look different from person to person. It is a spectrum disorder. And what that means is that there's a wide variation in the type and the severity of symptoms that people experience. Um, and autism spectrum disorder occurs in all ethnic, racial, and economic groups. So um, it does tend to be a little bit more common in boys than girls, um, but it really does occur across all paths of life. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just have some allergies and so I'm gonna have to probably clear my throat a lot today. Um, but because autism is a spectrum disorder, each person with autism really does have a distinct set of strengths and challenges. And the ways in which people with autism learn, think, and problem solve can really range from highly skilled, maybe even highly skilled in a specific area, to severely challenged in, in many parts of life. Um, some people with ASD require significant support in their day-to-day -day lives, while others, you know, might not need as much support and even in some cases live entirely independently with just, you know, very mild um, difficulties in those three key areas. All right, Steph, we can go to the next slide. I think a lot of times we do tend to dwell on the difficulties of individuals with autism. I think it's really important to remember that children with autism like all of us, exhibit a range of strengths and challenges. And we really do want to think about those strengths, um, especially when we are trying to work on some of those challenges. Uh, we want to remember that, that um, while, there are, while there are a range of challenges as far as the autism spectrum goes, um, there are also a range of strengths, just like in all of us. Um, you know, we're not, all, we're not all the same and neither are children with autism. And so when I was thinking about um, a good way to describe or, um, you know, really portray individuals with autism, um, I came across this video and it just seemed like this video does such a nice job, I think, of showing um, um, the true spectrum of autism. 
um, from kids, a kid's perspective. And so um, we'll go ahead and watch this video. It is a little bit long. Um, it's about it's close to 20 minutes, but I just felt like it does such a good job of showing autism in day-to-day -day life. Um, I think it's worth our time. So if you wanna click the link, Steph. There we're going. Just like you. Hi, my name is Morgan, and Brooke is my best friend. Hi, my name is Brooke, and I love my friend Morgan. Hi, my name is Austin, and my friend Tanner is cool. You should meet him. Hi, I'm Tanner, and it's great being friends with Austin. Hi, my name is Addison, and I love hanging out with my brother Christian. Hello. 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 My name is Christian. Hi, my name's Amy. I'm Christian's helper. Miss Amy makes it easier to hang out with Christian. Hi, my name is Trent Green, and as an NFL quarterback, it was part of my job to deliver information about our game plan to my teammates to help them be the best players they could be. And now I have the opportunity to share information that I've learned about autism with you to help you be the best friend you can be. When you meet someone who's a little different than you, you might be scared or uncomfortable. And that's okay. 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 Because anything new is a little scary at first. But once you learn more about it, you get used to it. Because then you have the knowledge, and knowledge helps you understand. And understanding makes it easier to accept. All of us are different. No one is exactly the same. We all have our own talents. Characteristics. Strengths. And challenges. I have autism. Autism. I have autism. Autism can mean a lot of different things. Some kids who have autism seem like a typical kid. And it only impacts the way they act and communicate in certain situations. That's the kind of autism I have. And with some kids, autism impacts the way they act and communicate all the time. That's the type of autism I have. And sometimes, autism impacts kids so much that they might not be able to control their bodies. Or communicate by speaking, like my brother. Me. 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 No one knows for sure why kids have autism. Scientists and doctors are working hard to figure it out. What we do know is that autism affects the way the brain and body work. For kids who have autism, their senses, thought processes, communication, and body movements happen differently. It causes them to experience the world in a very unique way. Austin's brain processes things differently than mine. Morgan senses things in the world in a unique way. It's called autism. Autism is not Christian's name or who he is. So please don't call him the autistic kid. Please, please, please. Because Austin is not just an autistic kid, he is just a kid who happens to have autism. I'm just a kid with autism. Autism is not a birth defect. It's not a disease. It's not contagious. It's not like a cold. You can't catch it. Autism is just something I was born with. It's something I live with. I will have it my whole life. It's just one part of who I am. It's just one part of my brother's amazing self. Autism affects the way kids take the world in through their senses. Situations that seem very normal to most people can be extremely painful to kids with autism. Specifically, autism can impact kids' eyesight. Autism affects the way I see. Some kids with autism have vision that is blocked in the middle. Like this. Like someone is holding a hand in front of their face. They can only see the sides or just one side. Others have the sides of their vision blocked and they can only see in the middle. But this makes everything blurry or double vision. It can make kids feel sick or disoriented. Another way autism affects kids is that lights may blind or hurt them or give them headaches. That happens to me sometimes. 
Or sometimes kids see two pictures instead of one. Like your eyes are crossing all the time. That happens to me sometimes. Christian's eyes don't talk to his brain the same way mine do. So even though Christian's eyes have seen ice cream before, they don't tell his brain what it looks like. I love ice cream. When he sees ice cream again, he doesn't remember what it is, but his other senses remember it. So he can feel that it's ice cream, or taste that it's ice cream, but he can't see that it's ice cream. It would be like trying to figure out what something is with a blindfold on. The only way to tell is by touching, tasting, or smelling. That's why Christian puts things in his mouth or touches things over and over again. He's just figuring out what they are. Yes. 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 When you have autism, your vision may work in these different ways. So it's easy to understand why kids with autism may have trouble looking you in the eye or looking at presentations at school. Or why I have trouble writing or walk with stiff legs or poke at the sides of my eyes. Seeing the world like this can make kids feel tired, overwhelmed, and frustrated. Christian loves to listen to you and look at you, but it's kind of hard for him to do it at the same time. When you see the world like this, it makes it hard to play sports, catch balls, or watch movies. That's the autism. But a lot of kids with autism can see things just fine. Christian loves going to the movies. It doesn't bother his eyes at all. Love. Love. It doesn't usually bother mine either. Morgan only has trouble with lights sometimes. We turn the lights down for Morgan during drill team practice when they hurt her eyes. Every kid is unique. But seeing the world in a unique way can be great. Historians believe that the famous artists Pablo Picasso and Michelangelo both had autism. They created amazing works of art with the way they saw the world. Our uniqueness makes us who we are. Kristen loves to draw. Autism can impact kids' sense of hearing. Autism affects the way I hear things. My brain can't ignore noises. Austin's brain hears everything all at once at the same volume. Sometimes it's hard to be in the classroom because I hear everything all at once. And it makes it really hard to concentrate. The sound of my own voice comforts me, so I start to hum or rock back and forth. It helps me. Sometimes Christian flaps his arms or leaves the room. That's just autism. A lot of kids with autism hear just fine. I love to listen to great music. Chatting in the hallways with my friends is one of my favorite things to do. Having this unique way of hearing can be great. Historians believe that the famous composer Mozart had autism. With the way he heard the world, he created amazing music. Our uniqueness makes us who we are. I'm really good at playing the piano. Autism can also impact kids' sense of smell. Autism affects the way things smell and taste to me. They get a really bad headache if I'm around someone who wears a lot of cologne or is a smoker. The smell of hair products makes me feel like I want to throw up. Christian really doesn't like the smell of cleaning products or mouthwash. No, no, no. That's autism. But a lot of kids with autism have a sense of smell, just like anybody else. I don't like the smell of skunk, but I don't think very many people do. Autism can also impact kids' sense of taste. Christian is really sensitive to some foods, so he brings his own gluten-free treats to parties. I have trouble eating eggs. They don't taste good to me. But all kids have things they don't like to taste. I don't like spinach. Autism can also impact kids' sense of touch. Autism affects the way I feel things. Some things really hurt my skin. We had a drill team uniform that was made of crushed velvet. It felt like sandpaper on Morgan's skin. She waited till the last minute before the routine to put it on. Tight clothes make me feel claustrophobic, like I'm in a straitjacket. Christian hates tags on his clothes. I think they're really scratchy to him. Yes. 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 And I have some sweaters that are pretty scratchy to me, too. <laughs> when someone touches or bumps into me unexpectedly, it hurts. It feels like an electric shock. It shoots up my arm and burns. Like when I was five and I stuck my finger in an outlet, I'll never forget that. That's just autism. Kids with autism love getting hugs when they expect it or know the person well. Hugs feel good. It's just pressure everywhere. In a nice way. Christian likes it too. He even wears a special vest that has weights in it to make it feel like he's getting hugged all the time. Having a unique way of 
feeling the world can be great. Historians believe that the scientist Sir Isaac Newton had autism. The way he felt the world allowed him to discover gravity. Our uniqueness makes us who we are. It's possible for all these sensitivities to hit at once. Eyesight, hearing, feeling, and sense of smell. It happens especially in public places, or sometimes in a classroom. Bright lights overhead, kids talking about their weekend, the teacher typing on the computer. The whirring of the fan, the smells from the cafeteria, the cleaning grass, the kid brushes his cap, and it feels like he's looking for a shop. So I made right back and forth, and I am. Makes me feel like I'm running the restroom, bang my head, hold my hands over my ears, and close my eyes. Once I learned how painful it can be for her, I understood why Morgan sometimes acts differently. I understood why with all that chaos bombarding him every day, it might feel good for us to do things in routines. Routines are comforting to me. I like to do things in routines. But if something in the routine changes, it could be painful for Morgan, so I try to help her with it. Another way for kids to cope is to spend time with an item that is familiar. Christian likes to hold on to this hula hoop when he's upset. It just helps him calm down. That's autism. I do certain things in my life to cope too. When I'm nervous, I twirl my hair. I get in trouble for biting my fingernails. We all have unique ways of dealing with the world. Our uniqueness makes us who we are. Kids who have autism process the world differently. Some kids process in pictures, others see only patterns, and others memorize facts about certain subjects. Morgan's brain sees everything in pictures. It's like she does a Google search that can only bring up images, but she has a photographic memory. I have a 4.0 GPA, and I've received the Presidential Award for having all A's for the past three years. I really like school. Austin's brain sees everything in patterns. It's like a Google search, but when you search something and you're only seeing groups of letters, the cool thing is, it makes them incredible at math. Some kids with autism process the world by memorizing facts about a certain subject. It would be like doing a Google search because it's only about movies or baseball or superheroes. Because kids with autism see the world differently, they also communicate differently. Morgan doesn't read social cues, facial expressions, or voice inflictions. The only way she knows how I'm feeling is if I tell her. I care a lot about how Brooke is doing. I just can't tell how she's feeling just from looking at her. And I'm taking classes to get better at it. But sometimes, even if she's yelling at me, I can't tell what she means. I can't tell if she's angry or trying to get my attention or happy. It could be any one of those things. It's just how my brain works. You can't tell how a robot feels because its voice and face is always the same. That's how Austin sees people, just kind of neutral. Another way that kids who have autism process the world differently is that they do not hear sarcasm and take words by their literal meaning. Austin has a hard time getting my jokes. I usually just explain why they're funny. If I would say, break a leg, Morgan, she would literally think I was wishing her to break a leg. So I just don't say that. I say good luck. I only know how to say what I mean. At least my friends always know that I'm telling them the truth. I never have to wonder with Morgan. She would never talk behind my back or lie to me. I can trust her 100%. I understand that Austin says whatever comes to his mind. I know he doesn't put social filters on things. I never take it personally, though. That's autism. I don't have a choice. It's just how my brain works. It's autism. I can talk pretty loud and get kind of hyper. That's OK. So can I. Everyone has their own way of communicating. Christian doesn't communicate by speaking, but he understands everything. Christian is learning to communicate in other ways, by using picture cards, sign language, and using his iPad. Peyton Goddard couldn't speak or control her body, but when she learned how to type on a special keyboard, she wrote a book, poetry, and graduated from college at the top of her class. Sometimes it's important for kids with autism to be by themselves. Christian likes to be alone sometimes, but most of the time, Christian loves to be around people, even though he can't talk to them. And kids with autism can take social classes to try to learn social cues so they can communicate better. Because I like hanging out with my friends. I have been taking social skills class for the past six years. Having friends is really important to me. Morgan and I have been friends since middle school. 
Once you learn about what autism is, you get used to it, because when you have knowledge, you understand, and it's easy to accept. I love being friends with Morgan. Austin is really cool to be around. I love to hang out with my brother. No matter how hard my day has been, no matter how tired I am, Christian can always cheer me up. He loves me no matter what. He can't tell me in words, but I can tell the way his face lights up when I walk into the room. Morgan is always her genuine self. She doesn't judge people. She puts her whole heart into everything she does and does it so well. And she does it all because she loves it, not because of what people think about her. Watching Morgan inspires me to open up and be myself. I love hanging out with Austin. Every time I'm with him, I learn something. He's always giving me a new way to look at things. He helps me feel good about the everyday worries and to just be in the moment. I really care about my friends. I care. I care. I care. It's easy to be a good friend to someone living with autism. Just treat them like any other kid. Any other kid. Just treat me like any other kid. Please. And help them when they ask for help. Don't baby them. Sometimes I need help and I will ask you for it. And just like any other kid, if they're behaving in a way that makes you uncomfortable, ask them to stop. Or get a teacher to help understand what's going on with your friend. I like it when Brooke helps me calm down. We have a signal. Just bring it down. And if you can slow down. I can understand you better if you slow down and speak plainly. I visualize everything. So it helps me understand if you write something down or point to a picture. And please wait for me to finish talking. Sometimes it takes me a while to say something. If you can be patient, you can find a friend that will change your life forever. It's awesome. And if you take the time to understand Christian, you will find out how smart and funny he is. And it's helpful to ask your friend with autism about their sensitivities and help them avoid those situations. Loud noises can really hurt my ears. It's easy to turn down the television or ask your friends to keep it down. Please know that kids with autism never want to hurt your feelings or make you feel uncomfortable. I can't see it when something I'm doing is annoying Tanner or hurting his feelings. So, I like it when he tells me. It helps me learn. I just tell Austin that that hurt my feelings and he doesn't do it again. Because Morgan is just like any other kid. She wants to learn, to grow, to fulfill her hopes and dreams for her future. I plan to go to college and get married someday. And like any other kid, Kids with autism want to be included. Christian loves it when he gets invited to a party. It may seem weird at first to have an adult around all the time, but you'll get used to it. I'm just here to help so that you can do anything you would do with Christian that you do with any of your other friends. I can teach you how to communicate, hang out, and be a good friend to Christian. It's worth it to hang around Christian. I like it when Tanner invites me to play video games with him. He beats me a lot. Morgan is good at a lot of things. Just like any other kid, kids with autism love people giving them compliments. And just like any other kid, kids with autism don't like it when you call them names or say mean things about them. Sad. Sad. I don't like it when people use the R word. Even when you're saying it about a situation or about yourself. It hurts my feelings. No matter how you use those words, they're always insulting to whoever you are talking about. So, please don't use the R word. Or any other mean words. We know you don't want to hurt anyone. Everybody makes mistakes, but when you know better, you do better. And if someone is being hurtful, it's okay to stand up for your friend with autism. It's okay to teach that person about autism. Maybe that person just doesn't understand or have the knowledge. You can give them the knowledge they need to understand. You can just show them this video. Because when you have the knowledge... The knowledge the knowledge. When you know what autism is, you understand. Understand. Understand why kids with autism may seem a little different. Understand that we are all different in our own ways. And when you understand, you can accept. 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 Accept that some kids have autism and they're still just a kid. Just like you. Just like you. Just like you. Just like you. Just like you.
All right. Thanks, Steph. So I just thought that that was such a good video um, to share. Um, and I thought maybe we could take a couple of minutes here to um, for you guys to actually share anything that kind of struck you from the video or anything that you think, oh yeah, I, I have seen that. I noticed that in students that I work with. Anybody have anything they'd like to share? Sherry? I just noticed, uh, Chris was in here, she had to leave, but we both said when they played that part where there's so much noise um, yeah. and they could not he really even think themselves because of all the distractions, that was just driving us to nuts, just listening to, to all of it. I thought the same thing. And then I thought, gosh, and that's not even taking into account um, the a light sensitivity or smell. You know, you can't get that over the computer. So it'd be really, um, I just can't imagine in day-to-day -day life, you know, dealing with that all the time, how difficult that would be. Chris said, you know, the girl that was doing the dancing, how she, when she practices, she has to have the lights down low. She said, well, I wonder how she does it when it, she has to actually do it with the lights on. Right. And with the audience. Like to perform. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, I had a student um, with autism uh, many years ago, and um, he did take his, um, his headphones with him. You know, he had the noise canceling headphones that helped him a lot. And uh, once we had um, a drumming group into our school to play, and I knew that this was going to be slightly stressful for him, even with the headphones on, because it would be so loud. We were in a gym, too. So, you know, the noise was uh, reverberating a lot. And uh, I said, are you sure you want to come? And he said, this might be my only chance to ever see this. Of course I want to come. So he was able to pull it together and I loved that perspective. So, yeah, but I, I didn't ever know about the eyesight. I've never known that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. It was really interesting. I thought too, the way that they could, you know, on a video, they could actually show what that would look like and you get a sense a little bit of how that would feel, but it really experiencing it on your own, trying to navigate through, I'm thinking of hallways and lines and you know, all the things that we ask kids to do, how that vision, just that, that one aspect of a sensory sensitivity could be so difficult and challenging. I think too, we never ask kids with autism to explain that to their classmates or as adults, we don't explain. I, as an adult, as a teacher, I didn't ask my students that. How's this sounding? I, I assumed a lot of things, but like we say, it's a spectrum disorder. It's different for everyone. So I shouldn't have been assuming. I should have been asking, what does it sound like when this happens? What does it look like when this happens? Those things. Yeah. And that was really one of my key takeaways was when they said, you know, ask us, ask us about our sensory sensitivities, you know, ask us what's, um, what might be bothering us or what we find bothersome. And I thought, gosh, we don't always think about that, you know, we're, we, we um, try to guess at what might be the problem instead of asking the expert, which is the individual themselves. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes if you feel like, okay, if I ask them certain questions, are they going to get upset at you right. for asking? So you're, you're kind of like, on the other hand, you're kind of scared to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think always just framing it as, you know, I want to know what this feels like to you. I want to know you better so I can help you better. Um, when we go into an assembly like this, what does it feel like to you? What does it sound like? And what does it look like? And things like that. You know, do they not want to sit so close with everybody in an assembly? You know, are, are there different times like that, that it's just too overwhelming? I appreciated the three perspectives of each student because sometimes I, as an adult, lump autism in the same thing. So I thought, you know, you kind of have more high functioning, more, I mean, all different levels, which I appreciated that because it really made it like, yeah, they all do things differently, but they have their ways of communicating and their ways of saying what they want. Um, yeah, so that was an eye opener to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Any other thoughts? 
I really appreciated when they said, um, you know, kids, individuals with autism experience the world in a unique way. And I think that is just a really good perspective for all of us um, who work with children um, to really think about kids with autism. You know, they're experiencing the world in a unique way. And, and sometimes that unique way that they are experiencing the world leads them to be more creative or to be more sensitive in a good way to certain things. And they are showing all those um, incredibly famous people in history um, who created or um, discovered things. And um, it's probably partially because of those, the way that the unique way that they experience things in the world. Anybody else have anything that they'd like to share from the video? Or maybe from an experience that you've had with a student? Yeah. Okay, well, I, I encourage people to share that out. Of course, this link will be in our presentation online at uh, bit.ly slash pairs of ESU8. And um, you could share that video with other people as well. I, I think it's a great eye opener. Thanks for finding that for us, Kathy. Yeah. Um, Steph, if you just want to click back to that video slide, <clears throat> the yellow slide, I just want to show, you know, the way um, there is another video link in this presentation too. We're not going to view it, but so where it's underlined there, if you just click on that, it's going to take you right to that video, just like you autism. And if for some reason it doesn't work, you can just Google that exact, just like you autism and you'll find it real quickly if you are wanting to um, watch it again or share it with someone. Um, all right, so we can jump ahead to the next slide stuff. So another thing that I want, I thought might be good for us to talk about would be um, how, how does someone know if their child um, has autism or how does that happen that um, we decide that this is an individual with autism? And so um, just kind of briefly, I thought I would share this information. So a child can receive a diagnosis of autism and or an educational verification of autism. And those really are two different things, um, though, they, uh, though they do overlap a little bit. Um, so on the left side um, there, I show that a medical diagnosis occurs when a medical doctor, a psychiatrist, or a therapist, counselor evaluates a child. And these professionals follow the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Medical Disorders, the fifth edition, or the DSM-5. And um, so they're following more of a medical approach, um, but they're still looking for um, those same areas of difficulty that we talked about before. So um, the social interaction, the sensory processing, and the communication. Then in schools, when we look, when we think about educational verification, it is slightly different. Um, you know, we have our own set of guidelines. So educational verification occurs when an educational team, and that team, um, you know, might include people like the speech language pathologist, the occupational therapist to really help look at some of those sensory areas, as well as any fine motor concerns that, that the child may have, um, the school psychologist, parents, teachers, um, could be the physical therapist as well. So a team of people gathering um, evaluation data and then a multidisciplinary team meeting is held. And educational professionals in Nebraska follow the NDE Rule 51 guidelines. Um, and so if we jump ahead to the next slide, um, because we're paraprofessionals in schools, um, I thought we could look at um, what the, that actual Rule 51, what it looks like. And so on the left, you see the picture of just the front cover. And then these are the actual um, criteria or points underneath autism that, that the team would be gathering data around. Um, and so you can see it's not, um, there's not like pages and pages of information. Um, it's, it's fairly short. Um, there is another document that gives a little bit more guidance, but um, you know, basically you're looking for um, those significant effects of a, ver a verbal and nonverbal communication and social interaction. So looking for a child who has a developmental disability that affects those areas that's generally evident before the age of three and that would adversely affect their educational performance. And then we also consider other characteristics um, such as engagement in repetitive activities, stereotype movements, 
resistance to environmental change or change in daily routine and unusual responses to sensory experiences. Um, and then there is another little statement here that autism wouldn't apply or the team shouldn't consider autism if the child's educational performance is adversely affected mostly because the child has an emotional disturbance, um, which is another verification category in Rule 51. Um, and then there's another little statement here about um, if a child um, shows characteristics of autism after the age of three, they could still be verified as having autism if the other criteria are met. So um, those would be what the school-based um, educational guidelines look like as far as when a team considers whether or not an individual has autism. Um, just gonna give you a few facts here too, that according to the Centers for Disease Control, autism affects an estimated one in 54 children in the United States. Um, and that number seems to be climbing all the time. Um, probably for a couple different reasons. Um, oftentimes we think that we're getting better at um, noticing um, maybe milder levels of autism or better at distinguishing autism when we thought before maybe it was something else. Um, there are several factors that might influence the development of autism and it is often accompanied by those sensory sensitivities and kids sometimes have medical issues also such as gastrointestinal disorders seizures or sleep disorders, um, and also individuals with autism are often more at risk for mental health challenges like anxiety, depression, and attention issues. So a student who um, is verified as, a, as an individual with autism might also have some other co-occurring conditions like attention difficulties, anxiety, depression, those types of things. Steph, if you want to jump ahead. So Again, I just wanna kind of review. So there's those three primary characteristics that we look for. So we look at social difficulties, so significant difficulties or differences or both in interacting with or understanding people and events. The communication area where we look at significant difficulties or differences which extend beyond just speech and language difficulties um, to other aspects of social communication, both receptive, what the student understands, and then expressive, so what the individual um, speaks out. And then we look for those repetitive activities and restricted interests. Um, and this is where we see that the individual is seeking consistency in environmental events to the point of exhibiting significant rigidity. So being very rigid in routines or has a significant preoccupation with um, or attachment to objects or topics. Um, sometimes you might see a real um, keen interest in, in a certain topic, um, like trains, um, or, um, you know, I can think of kids over the years. Um, you guys are superheroes, but I've actually have had students who were really interested in superheroes, and that was their area of interest or topic of interest. Um, I was working with a student once, and he just really put me on the spot and wanted to know, well, if I could be any super superhero, what would I be? And so I, I'm not, I wasn't really up on my superheroes. So I had, to, <laughs> I had to really think. And then he asked me, okay, so then what would your superpowers be? And so I don't know, I must've said something really lame. And he said, that's what you would pick for your superpower. <laughs> like, what are you thinking lady? <laughs> so um, usually those restricted interests do, you know, they, they kind of stick out as something that maybe is, um, it's just more intense than, than um, what you would see in another child that age. And it tends to kind of enter into all facets of their, of their life. So they'll bring it up frequently and, and talk with you at different times when maybe it wouldn't quite be appropriate. Um, if we go ahead to the next slide, Steph, if we look at each area then a little bit further. So social, what does it look like or sound like? So difficulty commenting on the feelings of others. Um, <clears throat> in the video, um, the one boy talked about, you know, well, I, well, actually both of the, in, um, both of the verbal individuals talked about really not being able to notice um, social cues and, um, the one friend of the boy, um, the individual with autism said, um, you know, he sees and hears people a lot like a robot kind of where the face looks the same to him, um, just not noticing those facial expressions in the different voice tones. And so that would fall under that social and communication in both areas. Um, so a limited understanding about other people's feelings and their perspectives. 
um, really difficulty with back and forth conversation. Um, so um, this, the individual might be talking about what they want to be talking about and you say something or comment and, and they just keep on going with what they're talking about, not necessarily um, having that back and forth conversation with you. And then also lack of joint attention and that joint attention would be um, in, in small children, joint attention can look like we're looking for that child to, to show some enjoyment with another person, oftentimes with a parent. So here's this new toy, mom, I'm going to come show it to you. And, and maybe we don't see that necessarily in those um, individuals with autism. They enjoy it by themselves and not share it with others. Um, the next area would be this um, communication. So difficulty reporting events, sharing things, delay or lack of verbal language. Some individuals with autism have a complete lack of verbal language. Um, they have difficulty integrating gestures um, with their verbal language. Um, initiating, maintaining, or ending conversations are difficult. And then um, they might have certain words that they use or phrases that they use more than would be typical. Um, and that could include some echolalia, so that repeating of some, what someone else has said, either right after they say it or later repeating lines from movies and things like that. That would all be echolalia. Also seen in the movie Rain Man, right? Um, right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes um, individuals with autism can use those movie lines appropriately in a conversation and sometimes they kind of really stick out. But either way, they tend to sound more formal or they, they will be said in the same tone as the first person said them. No, I can it, please. No, I can it. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Um, so now if we look at that repetitive activities and restricted, in, restricted interests. So again, that passionate or narrow interest often around a certain topic or object. Um, we would also consider physical behaviors here like arm flapping or rocking. And again, as they said in the video, those things can be in response to just being overwhelmed um, in that sensory area and they're, they're calming or soothing themselves. And then that real need for routine and consistency, like um, individuals wanting to take the same drive the same way, the same path, the same route over and over again. And if we deviate from that route, then it's really hard for them to get over and that might be difficult for them. Or a daily routine that changes a little bit can be really difficult. So all of these COVID <laughs> things that we have in place can be really difficult for individuals with autism. Um, as I said before, there is another video link in here just kind of for your own information, but um, Temple Grandin is one of the best known people in the autism community. She's a renowned animal behavior expert and she's created different things that um, in our rural area we might even know about. Um, so she really is a renowned person. Um, she gives speeches, she travels around the world and she can navigate society pretty well with some support. Um, however, many others with autism need daily care and support but they all have that same diagnosis or verification. So again, just a little more information on it being a spectrum disorder. There's a lot more information out there on autism spectrum disorder. And so I did wanna highlight um, this top one here, the Nebraska ASD network has webinars specific for educators or for paraeducators, excuse me. And um, so there is a listing of the ones that um, would be really great for paraeducators. Um, there's a course that's called the many faces of autism and so there's that link there and then for those of you who might want to know more about high functioning autism um, there is there's a great webinar there too about individuals who are um, considered on the you know having less severity in their symptoms um, of autism so I wanted to leave you with some additional resources there does anybody have any questions or comments Any specific questions for Kathy about students you might work with or situation? Okay, well, Kathy, thank you so much for the information. I know I learned a lot. Um, I, th I thought I knew a few things, but and I did, but um, I really learned a lot from this presentation. So thank you so much for sharing with us. And the good news, you know, there's always more information out there and new and changing research in the area of autism. So, you know, really, there's always new information in this area. So thanks for letting me share with you guys today. I appreciate it.
Thank you. And you know, another website that um, has a lot of good information is understood.org. Mm -hmm. We um, pointed you in that direction a lot of times in the past, Paris. Um, and I just, I really love that site for lots of good information. Yeah, I agree. That's a good one. What was it? Um, understood.org. It's actually a site that was, um, it has the focus of um, parents understanding their students' um, education and um, especially special ed students. Um, and so uh, it just explains it in a way that I can really understand it. So I, I always like that, that there's not a lot of jargon and I can really um, understand it. it. It puts it in simple terms for me. <laughs> Good. All right, so all year we've been talking, and um, well, last year we talked about self-care strategies, and um, in August, uh, Sonia Suckup shared some ideas for filling your own cup, and we want you to think about that. How are you, you know, on a day when you're a four, you know, and you're not feeling so good, how do you get yourself to feel good again? We have to take care of ourselves. So I wrote, I wrote you a poem today. <laughs> And um, in this poem, we're going to share some self-care tips for the fall. When autumn's cool temps start to make you feel snug, what will you choose to fill up your mug? I'm going to switch this. Okay. Go pumpkin picking, then cleaning and baking, or even jack-o'-lantern scary face making. A book with a blanket in your coziest clothes is a great is great in the fall, everyone knows. Dress your cat or walk your dog, fill your pet's cup, but not with eggnog. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Find a good costume right on the double. Whether it's squash soup or apple pie, comfort foods on the menu, no need to ask why. How can we have fall without pumpkin spice? It ha has a fine way to make all things taste nice. It's a great time uh, for you to learn something new. Try a task that you would love to do. A walk in the park, a hike in the trees, nature's beauty is sure to please. Saturdays in the fall cannot be complete unless you are watching your favorite team compete. So decorate your porch or start to holiday shop but remember to put your self-care needs on the top. So we just want you to really pick out in a, um, something that makes you feel good in the fall. And I think fall is, is one of those times of feel good things, right? Um, so we all have our favorite things and just pick one and feel good. Get yourself to that one or to a, to a two on our chart, um, especially when you're having a higher number day. And then when we started back in August, it seems like such a long time ago, we talked about um, your cape and we had you pick out one of your superpowers. And I just shared my cape back, um, or uh, sorry, the superpowers, we had to come up with three of them. And then we had you think about one of your kryptonites. So we just want you to think about how have you been doing it trying to um, improve your kryptonite and make that more of a strength? Anybody willing to share or have you just kind of put the cape to the, to the background? <laughs> I, my, my weakness is being quick to jump in. So I really tried when we've been back here in the office now, um, not always being so quick to say, I'll do it, I'll do it. I kind of wait a little bit, give people time to do something. So I'm not the one always jumping in and doing everything. So that's just what I'm doing. Anybody want to share? OK. 
Okay. Then we'll go on. And again, I just saw, I just thought this, um, it's about blessings. And I think right now, this time, we have to really count our blessings and think about what are some things that um, are really important to us or that we um, are thankful for, because it seems like our world is kind of in a topsy-turvy. So I just put, begin your day with love on your heart, expect great things, smile because you are alive, shine like the sun, inspire someone today. And I know that you guys all do a good job of always doing that. Never forget that God is with you all the time or grace is within you. Thank you everybody so much for joining us today. Um, we love to see you and um, we just hope that you're having a great year. And remember, we're always here for you. So if you need anything at all, just reach out and we're happy to um, help you out. So email or call, um, we're always right here for you. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye thanks. everybody. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. That was?